The purpose of this video is to demystify bread making because I can make artisan quality bread like this without touching the dough with my hands. No kneading, no yeast proofing, no mixer, no special bakeware. Hi, I'm Steve and welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm filming the ultimate introduction to no knead turbo bread. There are two types of no knead bread. Traditional, proofs for 8 to 24 hours, and turbo, ready to bake in 2 and 1 half hours. This video will demonstrate how to use the hands-free technique to make no knead turbo bread. I'll be using 13 ounces warm water, 1 and 1 half teaspoon salt, 1 and 1 quarter teaspoons instant yeast, 3 and 1 half cups bread flour. Let's get started. 13 ounces warm water. Next, I'll heat the wet ingredients and mixing bowl in the microwave. It isn't essential to warm the mixing bowl, but it's good technique. It provides consistency. The ideal temperature for proofing is 78 to 85 degrees, but the typical temperature of my mixing bowl when I take it out of the cabinet ranges from 60 to 72 degrees. And when I pour warm water into a 60 degree bowl, it will cool rapidly and require a longer proofing time. Bottom line. My goal is to warm the bowl and water to provide consistency, but I don't want to overheat the water, so I heat it in a microwave for 30 seconds in warm weather and one minute in cold weather, then test the water temperature with my finger to make sure it's warm, not hot. Next, one and one half teaspoon salt, and I'll check the temperature of the water with my finger to make sure it's warm, not hot. One and one quarter teaspoons is to yeast, sometimes referred to as bread machine yeast. And I'll give a quick stir to combine. Now the dry ingredients. Three and one half cups bread flour. I use a scoop and shake method for measuring flour. This recipe is very forgiving and you don't have to be exact. Next, I'll combine the wet and dry ingredients. The objective is to hydrate the flour. Watch. All you need to do is stir with a handle end of a spoon and it will come together and form a shaggy ball. Then change direction and tumble the dough to combine the moist flour on the bottom with the dry flour on top. I'll finish by scraping the side of the bowl to get the last bits of flour into the dough ball. And we're done. All we need to do now is cover the dough with plastic wrap and place it in a warm, draft-free environment to proof. Turbo dough should be proofed for 1 hour and 30 minutes in a warm, draft-free environment. It's important to proof dough in a warm, draft-free environment, but it's February and I don't have any sunlight, so I'm going to use the oven light method of proofing. Turn the oven light on, put the dough in the oven, close the door, and the oven light will warm the oven to a little over 80 degrees, which will give me a warm, draft-free environment for proofing. The dough has proofed for 1 hour and 30 minutes and more than double in size. It's time to make the bread. The first step is to degas, pull, and stretch the dough. Watch. The action I'm doing is very similar to that of a dough hook. I'm expelling the gases, pulling, and stretching the dough. And the dough is ready. The dough is ready for the baking vessel, but I would like to show you how easy it is to garnish and baste a loaf. So, I'm going to garnish the loaf with sesame seeds. This is the roll to coat method of garnishing. Just sprinkle the seeds on the dough ball and sides of the bowl and roll to coat. Now 
Next, I'll use the roll to coat method to dust the dough with flour. It makes the dough easy to handle and gives the dough a nice rustic appearance. My dear friends, that's how easy it is to make bread dough. Now I would like to show you the two basic methods for baking no-knead turbo bread. No-knead turbo bread can be baked in an uncovered baking vessel or a covered baking vessel. Because there is a slight difference in the technique, baking time, and baking temperature, I would like to demonstrate both methods. When I bake in an uncovered baking vessel, I proof the dough in the baker, so I'll start by spraying the bread pan with no stick spray, then roll the dough out of the mixing bowl into the pan. I placed the pan on the counter and covered it with a lint-free towel. When baking in an uncovered baker, proof the dough for 30 minutes. Before the dough is fully proofed, move the rack to the middle of the oven and preheat to 400 degrees. When the oven has come to temperature, place the bread pan in the oven and bake for 40 minutes. That's how easy it is to make no need turbo bread in an uncovered baker, and the sesame seeds give the loaf that little added touch. Once again, the first step is to degas, pull, and stretch the dough, but this time I won't garnish or baste the loaf. When I bake bread in a covered baker, I proof the dough in a skillet, so I'll spray an 8 inch skillet with no stick spray and roll the dough out of the mixing bowl into the skillet. I placed the proofing skillet on the counter and covered it with a lint-free towel to proof. When baking in a covered baker, proof the dough for 30 minutes. Before the dough is fully proofed, move the rack to the lower third of the oven and preheat the oven to 450 degrees. I'll be using a three-quart Dutch oven for my baking vessel. It'll give a nice shape to the loaf, but you can use any covered baking vessel. And here's how easy it is to transfer the dough to the Dutch oven when you're using a proofing skillet. Shake to center, and it's ready for the oven. Bake for 30 minutes at 450 degrees with the top on, and 3 to 15 minutes with the top off. I remove the lid and bake the bread for an additional 3 to 15 minutes to develop the crust. These recipes and others like them can be found in Introduction to No Need Turbo Bread. They are also included in My No Need Turbo Bread Cookbook, which is larger, more complete, including dinner rolls, pizza, and sweet rolls. I think you'll like them. I really appreciate your watching this video.